video for the Unit 3 Music Style and Composition Outcome 2B Organisation and Context Analysis of Earth Cry by Peter Sculthorpe. This is the first of two parts. This is a flipped classroom task for the Outcome 2 component of the Unit 3 VCE Music Style and Composition course. This content of the video will be the basis of the class discussion on this piece of music, so you must ensure that you watch the full analysis video before you come to class so that you can understand the concepts being covered and that you can contribute to the discussion. You're encouraged to take notes in your workbook while the video is playing so that you have some key points to reference in our class discussion as well as points you can raise in your assessments. Also, please ensure that you write any questions that you have that pop up during this video. Questions will be the starting point of our discussion in the next class. Peter Sculthorpe, a background. It's important that you understand a background about the composer so I suggest you pause the video for a second and read the four dot points that are on the screen. A summary of Peter's significant works throughout his life. Understanding the composer and how they have progressed through time can really give you a sense of the background of the work that we are going to study. So I suggest you pause this part of the video and read these interesting points about Peter Sculthorpe's compositional life. The program note. Before we start unpacking the program note, we need to explore what a program note is. Wikipedia tells us that a program note is the standard element of a concert where contemporary or classical music is being performed. Program notes serve two purposes, to provide historical and background information on the piece and, if necessary, the composer, and to give the audience some sense of what to expect and what possibly to listen for when listening to the work. With the presentation of contemporary pieces, it is common to include notes provided by the composer. Programs may include information about and quotes or commentary from the composer, the conductor or performers, as well as provide context regarding the musical era. Programs may also include information about the programmatic or absolute content of the music, including analysis, and may point out details such as themes, musical motives, sections or movements. So the program note from Earthcry. This is written by Peter Sculthorpe, as you can see his initials in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. My initial idea for this work was to write a second piece of the projected Mangrove series. I found, however, that my thoughts were more concerned with Australia as a whole than with particular parts of it. For instance, whenever I have returned from abroad in recent years, this country has seemed to me to be the one of the last places on earth where you can honestly write quick and joyous music. I decided, therefore, to write such a piece. Reflecting upon this, it soon became clear that it would be dishonest of me to write music that is altogether quick and joyous. We still lack a common cause, and the self-interest of many has drained us of much of our energy. A bogus national identity and its commercialisation have obscured the true breadth of our culture. Most of the jubilation I came to feel awaits us in the future. We need to attune ourselves to the continent, to listen to the cry of the earth, as the Aborigines have done for many thousands of years. Earthcry is a straightforward and melodious work. Its four parts are made up of a quick ritualistic music, framed by slower music of a supplicatory nature, and an extended coda. It owes a debt to the setting of the Aboriginal poetry, the Songs of Talatama, I don't think I said that right, but you can understand, that he completed in 1976. While the music of Earthcry is very much in his own personal idiom, the treatment of the orchestra represents a new departure. This is particularly noticeable in the way that instruments are doubled. First and second violins, for instance, sing in unison for most of the work, and the lower strings often sing with the lower brass. He has done this in order to summon up broader feelings and a broader landscape. This program note can, this program note can give us the context or the contextual issues behind the piece, which we will explore later. Instrumentation. Here's a list of the instruments that will appear in this piece of music. The structure. Earthcry has been composed in four clear sections, and they have been colour-coded to make them easy to identify. The diagram of the structure identifies the sections and what bars they start, the time code underneath that gives you a link to the audio reference, and the tempos up the top. So section A, which starts at bar 1, is lento or slow. Section B is broken up into four components. B1, an interlude. B2, and an interlude. 
a second interlude, and that is an allegro or fast tempo. Section C in blue is grave or very slow, and then section A again, a return to section A for the lento slow at the very end. So the first three sections are clearly identified by contrasting tempos, and the final section is a recapitulation or a repeat of the opening A section, but with a few variations. In this video, we will study how contrast, repetition and variation is used in all of these sections individually. And below the structure image above are time location points which identify where each of the sections begin in the complete work. Section A, the Lento. Here are some key points of the section. There's a loud timpani strike to begin the section and to announce the beginning of each melodic phrase. The main theme or melody is presented in the trombones and the viola. Open sustained chords in the low strings and brass create a sinister or menacing tone colour. The main theme is made up of only five notes or pitches. These are D-flat, D, G-flat, A-flat and A. And there is an argue, argument that is based around a Japanese scale, but there's no real supporting evidence to this. The use of the D flat and the D and the A flat and the A focus on the interval of a minor second, which is arguably one of the most dissonant intervals in Western music. And the overall melodic section is divided into four phrases. And here are the contours or the shapes of the four phrases in section A. Now, before we start pulling apart section A, let's hear it in its entirety. A reduction of the main melodic phrase is shown here, and this is played by the trombone and the viola. The minor second dissonance opens the theme, as you can see here. Rhythmic phrases and patterns start on offbeats and cross the bar, creating syncopation. An irregular flow of time signatures makes the melodic phrase length somewhat unpredictable. This is phrase A. Let's have a listen. This is phrase B. Let's take a listen. This is phrase C. Let's take a listen. And this is phrase D. Let's take a listen.
So now you can see the four phrases, the contours were shown in the top right hand corner of the screen. You see the melodic notation of the phrases and you can hear them. There is a repeated note or an emulated harpsichord pedal note, which is a repeated rhythmic tone due to its inability to sustain notes in the low strings and brass in the underpinning the melody. This signifies a predominant tone in the section. At the end of the presentation of the melodic themes, there is a high-pitched dissonant response to the low melody. And then consonant chords are presented at the end of the section, followed by silence. The tam-tam, or Chinese symbol, indicates the end of the section. Now that we've pulled it apart and understand section A, let's listen to it again. Section B1, the Allegro. It's identified as Rehearsal Mark II, or bar 21 in the score. The introduction of a new tempo and time signature occurs. You can see that it's 1216, and the 1216 time signature indicates four groups of three semiquavers. Strings playing in unison, thickening the texture and developing the tone colour. There are pedal point characteristics identified in the opening section of B, with the single note repeated under the melodies. Unison strings introduce the rhythmic phrase in a pseudo four bar intro before the melodic content is introduced. And once again, like section A, there are four melodic phrases, and each is approximately three bars in length. Each melodic section consists of 12 bars, 4 times 3 bar phrases, and the complete melodic section repeats 4 times in total in section B1. Melodic phrase number 1. Violin 1 and 2 are doubling the melody, or unison, thickening the texture. Lower strings, the cello and the viola, are on a drone like A, with a slight variation at the end of the phrase, adopting the minor second dissonance presented in section A. And the double bass has a two note falling melodic idea, starting on an offbeat. This is really interesting part, because we think with the prominence of the double bass sound, when it plays, it's highlighting the first beat of the phrase, but it's actually not. As you can see in the score, it starts with a dotted quaver rest. So it's actually highlighting syncopation. <laughs> Melodic phrase number two. Violin one and two are repeating the previous introduced melody. A variation occurs in the viola and cello repeated A pedal point phrase with an ascending or descending leap, as you can see here. And variation of the double bass falling phrase has occurred. It's now a three note arc shaped melodic idea or a compound major second interval. Before we move on, just understanding the term compound major second. 
Putting the word compound in front of an interval means the interval is greater than an octave. So you could say a compound major second is the same as a major ninth interval. If you need more clarification on this, write this down and we can answer this when we have our class discussion. <laughs> Melodic phrase number three. A wind layer is added. A quadruplet rhythmic pattern, which is four quavers in the same space of six qua semiquavers, or four versus six, provides cross rhythms against the semiquaver phrasing in the strings. Only three notes are used, meaning that the first note of each quadruplet changes each time. This creates a staggered rhythmic feel when put on top of the semiquaver run of the strings. The violins repeat the previous melody. The cello and viola repeat the A pedal point. And the double bass has reinstated the two note falling melodic idea from the melodic phrase number one. You can also see by just looking at the score that the texture of this section is getting bigger and bigger as we move along by adding new sounds and new patterns as we go through each of the melodic phrases. Melodic phrase number four. There's a repeated woodwind quadruple idea moving from one player to another which explores performance tone color. What does that mean? Moving from one flautist to the next means that they will approach and play the phrase Differently, it'll sound the same, but there will be subtle changes which will enhance the tone colour or sound of the way that the flute line is played. This occurs in the clarinet as well. The entire string section is repeating the ideas from melodic phrase number two, and that's including the ascending and descending interval leap in the viola and cello part and the three note arc phrase in the double bass. <laughs> So you can see that he's taking ideas and building upon them and mixing and matching different sounds that he has created. So highlighting the compositional devices of contrast, variation, repetition, section A versus section B1. So contrast, there is a tempo contrast between the sections. Section A is slow tempo, lento, as opposed to the faster, allegro, agitated and rhythmically syncopated section B. There is a change in time signature, mixed meter in section A, whereas section B settles on a single 12-16 time signature. The rhythmic placement of the bass line in section B contrasts the predictability of the timpani line in section A. Where the timpani suggests the beginning of a phrase, the bass line adds to the rhythmic uncertainty and does not indicate the start of the melodic phrase. The instruments in section A seem to move together, whereas the instruments in section B seem to work somewhat independently of each other. Repetition. Both sections use textual development, adding wind instruments later in the section. However, how they are used contrasts. In section A, the winds create tension through the extreme contrast in register and tone colour. Whereas in section B, they are used to create cross rhythmic patterns against the string section. But both sections are made up of four key melodic phrases. And finally, variation. Section B repeats the melodic phrases and varies or develops them subtly each time. The transition, which is identified as rehearsal mark 6 or bar 73 in the score. Part 2 is linked to part 1 with an interlude. There is a time signature change to 9 16th, which sees a move to rhythmic phrasing of three groups of three semiquavers, as opposed to four groups of three part um, which is stated in part B1 as you can see here. The change is driven by the bongo rhythm and brass chordal stabs as we transition into section B2. Section B2 the allegro part 2 it's identified as rehearsal mark 7 or bar 89 in the score. And B2 repeats the concepts and melodic ideas presented in B1. However, there are a few important changes. 
Tone colour and instrumentation contrast is a key feature here as the melodies have moved into brass instruments, which are French horns and trumpets. Violins now play a new counter melody. Lower brass is added into the tone colour of the piece to thicken the texture and contrast the previous part. But there is a return to the 1216 or four groups of three semiquaver rhythmic patterns contrasting the previous interlude, which was 916 or three semiquaver groupings. But it's interesting to note that this entire section is essentially the same as B1 in regards to its design and its arrangement. There are a few variations which create contrast and keep the listeners engaged. However, it is generally the same. You can see here that the brass pay a variation of the original melodic motives from part one, and the violin's counter melody is added to thicken the texture. The violin line is based around a descending minor second idea, which is repeating the idea of the minor second which was established in section A. The oboe has been introduced, and it uses sustained notes to contrast melodic movement. A woodwind counter melody is used to thicken the texture and add to the tone colour. The low brass mimic the three note arc pattern of the double bass from the melodic phrase number two. And the bass returns to the two note falling melodic line of phrase number one. So theoretically, we have both bass line phrases presenting at the same time. You can also see by just looking at the the actual score, that the texture is getting thicker because more and more instruments are being introduced. At rehearsal mark 9, or bar 117, the percussion be begins to play regularly and heavily adopting the quadruplet idea that was previously stated in the woodwinds. This recreates a polyrhythmic idea and thickens the texture considerably. At rehearsal mark 10, or bar 129, the percussion continues with the quadruplet idea, however there is a slight variation in the way that it is played. The tom-toms are now required to play a double stroke roll, which, which contrasts the tone colour of the previous presentation of the quadruplet. B2 mirrors the melodic and harmonic material that is used in B1, and using this as a foundation to develop ideas that he uses to keep the same material fresh and new. Peter Sculthorpe uses instrumentation, texture and melodic developments to reinvent the music that he showed us in B1 to create new energy and to keep us engaged. And the interlude returns and it's identified at, as rehearsal mark 11 bar 141 on the score. There is a strong sense of repetition of the tone colours from section B2 However, the main melody has been removed. The interlude is now designed as a transition to move us from the craziness of section B into something new and a little more stable. There is a return or a repeat of the 916 time signature and rhythmic phrasing with the three groups of three semiquavers, which contrasts section B too. And the bongos highlight the transition into the third section with a dramatic crescendo, which is an increase in volume, and a molto rallentandando, hope you like my Italian accent there, which is a dramatic slowdown or decrease in tempo. And this is the end of the first part of our analysis. To recap, we looked at the use of contrast, repetition and variation in section A, section B1, interlude 1, section B2 and interlude 2. It is encouraging you revisit the audio of the work to familiarise yourself and revise the concepts that we have discussed in this analysis. 
to prepare yourself for the next step of the analysis and the upcoming assessment. And of course, please feel free to rewatch this analysis as many times as you need to so that you understand the concepts of what we are going to cover in our class discussion of this piece. Don't forget to bring your notes and particularly your questions to the class so we can build upon this, explore your ideas and clear up any questions that you may have before we move on to part two. Hopefully you found this useful and thanks for watching.